Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Your Passion podcast. Today we interview and get to know the story of Patrick Snyder, legendary content creator, marketing genius who's worked with people like Charlie Rocket, Dr. Fabi, Marco the Champion, and many more greats. Welcome to the podcast, Pat. <laughs> thank you for having me, man. Appreciate to be on here. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. So uh, I know you just moved out here from, uh, you know, AZ. And uh, how's, how's the transition going so far out in San Diego? Transition's been good, man. Uh, for a while, we've been out in Arizona for the past eight months, you know, trying to build out iLegends and get some clientele out there, uh-huh. which we have. And we've expanded to our second office. And so... With some circumstances, with having you know so many <laughs> clients out here in San Diego, we decided just to move back and to be closer to all of our clients who are out here. And the transition's been pretty good, man. Just going, I love the weather out here. The weather is you know fantastic. <laughs> Waking up to 75 degree weather and you know being able to have the sweater on and stuff like that. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, um, so what was your life like at an early age, and uh, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, which is uh, in the East Coast, and growing up my whole life, I've been playing sports and, you know, going to school like a normal average kid, and looking back at my life now, it's kind of funny because I never really liked photography, videography, or anything like that, Mm -hmm. but I've always had a toy camera or something, like pretending to take photos or something. I thought that was kind of funny to have, like, in my subconscious of me just pretending to be a photographer and doing all that, but... um. Growing up in Florida definitely took a toll on me uh, just with the environment that I was in and the family I was growing up with. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just, it was very, very weird my mentality. And then making the transition from a conservative area in Florida, which is a very small town, and then going to the big city over here in San Diego and Phoenix. And it, it definitely is a really big transition, especially for someone who's been growing up in like the countryside and now being faced with the concrete jungle of San Diego and Phoenix. Right. So, Yeah. <laughs> um, who did you look up to as a kid? Like, did you look up to Michael Jordan? Did you look up to videographers? Like, uh, definitely. Uh, actually, I looked up to Kobe Bryant because of his work ethic, uh-huh. and he was always just grinding, grinding. I heard this one story of when he was on the off season that one of the coaches or one of the stadium head guy coordinators was there, and they saw Kobe just doing free throws in the off season. They're like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "I'm not." getting off this court and so I know that I've improved myself mm-hmm. and so I you know I adapted to that mentality of okay how can I become the greatest how can I better myself than I was yesterday so you know that's what I started implementing is be a better version of yourself than you were yesterday so I think Kobe Bryant definitely uh put a toll on me for sure mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what was your uh, high school experience and uh did you go to high school in Florida or where where did you go to high school uh, high school experience was, uh, it was pretty, you know, I learned not from just the school, but like learning society wise and my personal self. Um, I went through a lot of, uh, I went through depression a lot through middle school, high school. So that again, took a toll on me growing up. And I, I did grow up in, in high school in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, where I played lacrosse, football, just a normal high school kid. And then I actually got into photography my junior year and all of my senior year of high school, I dedicated myself to just taking photos and I literally brought my camera to school every single day when I would go to lunch or if I just had free time, I would grab a girl or a friend of mine and just be like, yo, like, let's go get some photos real quick over in this corner or something. Right. It would just be like the craziest ideas in, in high school. So yeah, that was pretty much my high school. It was normal. And then I found my, my passion once I was getting close to uh, graduating. Mm-hmm. So that first camera, like you were saying, um, what was the, was it a Sony? Was it a Nikon? What, what, what was it? You know? <laughs> Just starting off. Uh, at first, it was my iPhone. Oh, really? And I was just taking photos of my iPhone, yeah. And mm-hmm. then, I don't know why, I got into this phase of buying lenses and stuff for the iPhone. And yeah. Did, <laughs> and did that for a while. But then, I started working, and I saved up money to get a camera. And then, from there, that's when I started, you know, fully loving the passion. And then, starting to charge people for photos here and there. 60 bucks for a photo shoot, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so you just mm-hmm. you just literally be hustling. You'd be taking random people after school. Just saying, hey, let's go take a photo shoot. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to wherever. Let's just go to, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. I literally man. ditched school for photo shoots. Like me and my friends would plan, okay, so this day I have this uh, stupid math, uh, math exam thing. Whatever going on, Let's yeah. just not do that and let's just go over here by this 
this abandoned park and let's go take photos here yeah and that's literally how my senior year went that's so great it was it was pretty fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh so that was really your first uh i guess you can say content creation or what would you say it was my my first uh content creation uh-huh huh um i guess so you can say yeah like mm-hmm. i was first i was a photographer and i told everyone i was a photographer and then mm-hmm. I made that transition to a content creator when I actually started doing this full time mm-hmm. and I started getting paid for photography and then Marco champion, who's now my mentor, he actually flew me out from Florida and said, I want you to be my videographer. Right. Me being the photo guy, never yeah. pressing the record button. Uh-huh. I'm like, uh, I guess let's try it out, you know? And then it's when the Kobe mentality come back. Like, how can I be better as myself? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to learn video. Mm-hmm. And then I got into videography, and then now I got into graphic design, digital design, and now I've mastered all, all the, the whole forms, the yeah, parts out there. Yeah. So for your, uh, talking about videography, um, for your editing style, who in, who inspired your editing style? Because I know everyone's unique when um, it comes to that department. Yeah, uh, definitely Peter McKinnon and Daniel Schiffer. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Daniel Schiffer, 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 yeah, yeah. B-roll. Yeah, yeah, the B-roll king. Um, he inspired me for sure with the when it comes to the, my promotional videos mm-hmm. because it's crazy how he's able to implement a story of these B-roll shots, like just his technique and stuff, and how he was able to tell a story within like a 30-second promo. Right. That's when I got inspired from Daniel, and I was like, okay, he's doing something right. He's able to have me watch literally a whole video start to finish without even, like he had my full attention for 30 seconds. So it's like, how am I going to be able to implement that into my work? Mm-hmm. So then that's where I got my inspiration from Daniel Schiffer of doing my promos and then my editing style with like my artistic stuff I throw in here is definitely Cole Bennett. <laughs> that's great. I love that guy. Like that, <laughs> that's one of my biggest, uh, yeah, I'm trying to be like him one day, making music videos left and right. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, you know, yeah. what are the benefits of hiring someone as a content creator as opposed to trying to do it on your own? What are the benefits? Well, <laughs> would you, you know, would you re- prefer to, you know, cook yourself a really expensive dinner or would you prefer a chef who's been doing it for years come over and cook you that expensive dinner? So it's like, yeah. how bad do you want your content creation to be good, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, especially right now in the age that we're going towards, like everyone's on their phones. Every, mo- 90% of the time when you're looking at your, on your phone, it's, uh, you know, what content are you consuming? Mm-hmm. So with our, our job is to make sure that this content that we're making is, you know, artistic is valuable, making sure that, you know, you're providing, you're providing a message through your photos and your videos or whatever pieces of content you're holding. And I saw this estimate by 2021, every single, about 89% of businesses are going to be moving towards media, social media and content creation marketing. Mm-hmm. And so as of right now, if you're a photographer or videographer creative and you're trying to make some money and you're trying to do this full time, I think right now in this day of age is the perfect opportunity to hop in before, you know, everyone's a content creator and right. everyone has their clients and the people <laughs> is so it's, it's definitely very important in the next couple of uh, years to come. Mm-hmm. How did, uh, how did you start working for I Legend, I Legends media? And then how did that start to come? So I Legends is a uh, personal branding agency and they focus on uh, people building people's personal brands and building reputation. Yeah. And so what we focus on is people who are in the industry, entrepreneurship industry, personal development industry, pretty much people who want to help other people to make, make it to the next level. Mm-hmm. So example, one of our clients, the Panazzo team is a real estate agent. So his niche is how can I teach real estate agents to be just like me? Right. And so, I was trying to do that with photography saying, how am I able to teach the young kids who are just like me doing content creation, doing photography, but they don't have the right direction or right mindset. Mm -hmm. So I want to be the one to say, Hey, look what I'm doing. This is how I did it. And now here, this is how you can implement it to be just like me. Right. So I legends when Marco, the CEO found me and wanted me to come create for him. He's like, this is not only is this a business, this is a, a community where you are going to be surrounded by people who want to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's going to develop you to be the best version of yourself. And even with content creation, entrepreneurship, anything, you just got to be the best version of yourself. Just like I said, bettering yourself from yesterday. So 
at Legends, I'm able to create content for other uh, our clients, but I'm also building content for myself and learning on the way. Mm-hmm. And with I Legends, I was able to be taught how to run a business, which I never ever thought I'd be running a business. Right. <laughs> but here I am now, starting uh, with my business partner Patrick Crosby. We're starting Legendary Media, mm-hmm. so and that's where I'm going to be able to implement my services of teaching creators who are young and ambitious or who don't have, who aren't in the, headed in the right direction, be able to have this resource of, hey, I'm. I'm here for you. I'm doing what you want to do. I'm here for you. And I'm here to show you like, it's going to be hard, but all it takes is just putting in the work and really having the love and passion for what you do. Mm -hmm. How do you show empathy towards those who are just starting off who basically have no idea what they're doing? How do you do that? Well, uh, usually uh, the guys who come to me with questions and stuff are always stressed out and Mm -hmm. have no idea what they're doing. (laughs) So typically I get a guy hitting me up saying, Hey Pat, so here's my situation. I really want to make money off with my camera, but I really want to quit my nine to five. And so that's a very complex, you know, equation there. Yeah. And you got to think, I got to figure out, okay, what's your situation with your nine to five? What's your situation with your content creation? Let's be able to tie that together. Because at the end of the day, every single kid who's not doing this full time is stressed out because this is what they want to do. Right. And so I just need to figure out a way what their situation is what's the antidote to that stress and how I can provide value in giving a hand to those young kids who are coming to me mm-hmm. up front. Uh, when did you realize, mm-hmm. at, at what point did you realize that, hey, I can just do this for the rest of my life and I'll be good instead of thinking back to the old mentality of, hey, I got to work a nine to five. Oh, I got to buy a house. Oh, I got to work and work up to a manager. You know what I mean? The typical things that mm-hmm. everyone's usually thought in society. Yeah, it's just... Um, I think I had that mentality for a little bit of working the nine to five in there, yeah. you know, just, so my mindset before I, what I was doing now, it was, all right, I'm in high school. I'm going to take photos. I'm making money with my photography. I'm not making, you know, six figures or making three to $2,000 a month. Nothing big. Yeah. But nothing good. Like I'm just making 60 bucks here, 60 bucks here. I'm just going to work at, at I, I used to work at five guys, which paid really well. Oh, wow. So I was able to have my savings was lit, <laughs> but for, like for you guys who are working your nine to fives, just milk that until you get, you know, enough money to afford lights. And all you need for, to start a business as a videographer or creative, you just going to have a camera. You don't need anything else. You just need something that records and takes photos. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, with the mentality back then, I always knew, I always knew what I wanted. I said, I want to be creating full time. I don't know what the universe is going to do. I don't know what my journey is going to look like. But I know at the end of my journey, I'm going to be doing what I love regardless. Mm-hmm. So I just had that implemented in my mind. I, I honestly did not know I'd be moving to San Diego. I did not know I'd be in Arizona. I didn't know I would be starting this business. I just knew this is what I want to do full time. Did you always have faith during that time when you were looking to get a breakthrough? Or did you have personal doubts throughout that? And then how did you wrestle with that? Of course, when you're in that, that moment of, I really want something. Mm-hmm it's hard not to think negative. So like I say, like, if I really want something, you got to already picture yourself there. But it's, you know, it's hard when it's not that reality. Example, you say like, oh, I'm, I want to be a millionaire. Everyone wants to be a millionaire. Sure. But you got to put yourself in that millionaire mentality and that vibration of I already am a millionaire. Time is just taking its course. Mm-hmm. So when I heard that from someone, which was my mentor, he told me in order to ask from the universe and receive from, I'm a very spiritual person. So when I learned about this stuff, I was like, at first I was like, okay, this is BS or this yeah. is okay. Like, all right, whatever. Manifestation and all these things like manifesting your future is real. Yeah. Because I was able to manifest myself a year ago saying, oh, I already am the fucking photographer. I'm, I looked at myself in the mirror every morning telling myself, I'm a creative. I'm a young kid who's killing it right now in the media game. And here I am later in a place that I never thought I'd be living at with a camera. Yeah. So it's just putting yourself in that mindset of you're a beast, you can do this. And it's just all self-belief at the end of the day. Personal quantum belief within yourself that you're going to break through, right? Exactly. Mm. So um, moving into your other ventures, uh, how did you end up becoming the creative director of Motive Brand? And uh, what did you do to that brand to uh, make it what it is today? So my Motive Brand was started by Marco Champion, who was my mentor. Yeah. And he started it, I don't know if you know much about Marco Champion's story, but he was ran over by a car 
um, back when he was 15, and doctors told him he wasn't going to be able to walk, and he, you know he would be on a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Wow! And so that took a you know that takes a toll on someone when they say you can't walk for the rest of your life. You're going to be in a chair. So he literally for like four months straight he meditated like every single day he would meditate for like five hours just saying i'm going to move my legs i'm going to i'm going to walk again i'm going to be able to go on a skateboard and that's another thing about manifestation he pictured himself skateboarding again every single day even though they told him you're not going to walk he said i'm going to skateboard <laughs> you're yeah. not going to tell me what i'm going to do i'm a, i know for myself i'm going to be able to walk and then until finally i think it was two months in he finally started getting some toe movement and leg movement. And that's when he knew he was like, I would be able to walk. And that's when he started motive. And then motive blew up. It became a really big name in San Diego. Uh, if you have, if you go to skate parks and talk about motives, there's going to be one kid that knows about yeah. motive, which is awesome. I think um, I was able to create content for the landing page with motive. Um, as of right now, there's not much of my work on the motive page, okay. but I am focusing on building up their content strategy for the uh, relaunch of motive because Marco has been, Focusing on high legends, so he hasn't had you know full time to on motive, yeah. but yeah. So um, as soon as we get these systems built out in place and high legends, motive is going to be going in a hundred percent. Got um, it. With content creation, with different collections and stuff, so on and so forth. We're gonna start seeing some awesome stuff right there. <laughs> oh, hundred <laughs> percent. So when uh, so when one someone hires you for content work, um, do they usually have a plan in mind of what they want, or do you come in uh, and think of like for a week, and then you come in with the strategy for them? How does that go? It just depends on the. It just depends on the client, to be honest. Like a lot of people do overthink, like what's the process? You just gotta read what your client wants. Okay. Um, it depends. Like I'll have a client come up to me and be like, "Okay, I want you to shoot this uh, pizza commercial. I want you to um, come here on this day, film to six to eight because this is where I don't have no customers. You can film whatever, mm-hmm. and then here's the next day. They usually do plan it for me. Yeah. But if it's someone who's like, I have no idea. I need. I know. I just need all the help. Do, just take over then it, I think that's the most fun part is when I get to take over and say, okay, I'm going to do this, do this, do this for you. But usually I sit down with my client before either in person or on a phone call and we get mm-hmm. to build a relationship a little bit, get to know each other, understand what the vision is. So I can, you know, further than I can create their vision that they're envisioning. Got it. How did uh, Grant Cardone end up uh, supporting uh, motive brand? How did that, ha- how did that happen? Because, you know, Grant Cardone, <laughs> he's, he's a legend, man. And he, rarely supports anybody you know yeah um so the the story is marco he's the one who actually was like a long time ago when he was really going hard on motive mm-hmm. he thought of a plan he's like i'm not just gonna go up to grant because he was gonna go to a grant cardone event like already ahead of time 10x he yeah. was like i want to give grant cardone like my shirt and he already i think he mailed him uh, the shirts out. and yeah didn't, yeah but didn't hear anything back from grant so he's like okay I'm going to go up to him in person and give him the shirt. But instead, he had the motive, and I think it said on the side 10X or whatever. Yeah. And he went up to him in the Grand Cardona event. The Grand Cardona, oh, my God, you're giving this 10X shirt. Right. And he's obviously, he's going to be like, oh, 10X, my brand. Yeah. So he turned around. and was like, oh, thanks, man. Didn't even look at the shirt. Just grabbed it. Thanks, man. Wow. Thank you so much. And then turned around. And then next day, I guess he, Marco did talk about Motive Brand. He's a 10X shirt by Motive Brand. And then he took a photo with it and was showing off the shirt. Wow, that's so amazing. It was just, it's, all about, it's all about placement and being able to read a situation for sure. Gotcha. How powerful, because I know um, how powerful is a DM to someone, especially in this day and age, for the people that don't know how easy it is to connect. Uh, Oh, hundred percent. It's, um, it starts with, uh, everyone always focuses on ROI uh-huh. and a lot of my team and I focus on ROR, which we start to notice it, which is return on the relationship. Mm-hmm. And we see that happening a lot and it does work a lot. It takes a little bit longer, of course, you know, when you try to get a client, but in the long run, the client's going to pay for more, have a better experience because they already know you. Uh-huh. And they're just going to keep, they're going to keep coming back to be honest. <laughs> like, yeah, they're going to they love, love everything, all the services. And if you over provide hundred percent, they're going to, you're not even going to look at you as a job. They're going to look at you as, Oh, I'm hanging out with my best friend getting some dope content with me. Right. So that's, you got to make sure that that client is a one with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, working with like all these legends, like, you know, Charlie rocket, Marco, the champion and uh, you know, Dr. Fabi, um, how do you not let your ego get in the way? You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. Um, I definitely do sometimes have my ego do come back and haunt me here and there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to let my 
but I always remind myself on a consistent daily basis because I meditate and I work on my personal development right. is that you got to make sure that your ego, because your ego could kill you too. Your ego can so really get you in places so where it, it's happened to me in the past. I, I, I had an ego problem and I, I checked myself and I'm like, okay. And that's how I was able to grow. Right. And not having an ego and just knowing that, okay, I'm constantly reminding yourself, all right, I'm not at the point where I want to be yet. So stop acting like you're hard or stop acting like you're this. Right. Like, I'm not, I can act like I'm the bad, biggest, baddest content creator out there in, on Instagram. Sure. But, you know, what's, what's that going to benefit? Is that going to benefit you? Is that going to benefit the next person? Like, no, it's not going to benefit anyone except mm-hmm. me because I have the big old ego, whatever. Myself, yeah. But it's just, exactly. And there's no happiness in that either. You're not here to impress everyone, you know? Uh-huh. So just having that non egoistic um, mindset and being able to just adapt and grow is. It helps you a lot in the long run. Mm-hmm. And then I know I correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you did uh you did camera work for Charlie Rocket at his um Quantopia event. Is that true? Yeah, uh, how yeah, did, I did yeah I did camera work and I did the editing for it. Yeah, I was gonna go down to that event because I'm uh I follow uh Charlie's content on uh Pink Door because oh, nice. his podcast on there. So I was following that yeah. super close, and then I was doing some more research on you, and I noticed that, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah the the goal is definitely to hit up uh, Charlie and get him on the podcast for sure. But uh, we'll oh, see where things go. Dude. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Um, how do you personally define success? Just being happy uh-huh. at the end of the day, just regardless of because everyone has success wrong. It's money. It's the the hot, all the ladies or whatever. They're nice cars that's not success, dude. Like there's people that have that who are depressed out of their minds and wish they were dead. And it's sad to say, but it's true. There's rich people out there that literally look at their luxury. Like it's fucking nothing Mm -hmm. yet. There's someone over there across the country who just bought a house for his kids. He's the most happiest motherfucker in the world. You know, excuse Mm -hmm. my language, (laughs) but (laughs) uh, it's just being happy because you know, that's just all that matters. You know, it's, making sure that you're okay, making sure your loved ones are okay. Mm-hmm. And like success to me is being able to buy a house for my whole family and making sure that no one in my family is starving or poor. Right. So that's happiness to me, but happiness is different for everyone. So I just think, just be happy, do what you love. Don't do something you don't want to do. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's success. Gotcha. How do you maintain your spell? You spoke about family for a little bit. How do you maintain your relationships with your family with your loved ones while you're doing all this work, going back and forth uh, across the United States? Uh, they, they understand. They understand that I'm a constantly busy and I'm consistently doing some content or being able to talk to people and traveling here and there. Um, luckily, when I moved out to San Diego, most of my family is in Mexico or in San Diego. So they sometimes hit me up and like, hey, I'm going to come to your place and say hello, which my mom, yeah. I'm blessed to say this, my mom did that uh, two days ago. Didn't even plan it. I was busy doing whatever. So I'm coming over. Just went out. Okay. And yeah. I get to see her. Yeah, I just go and went out. But yeah, I keep in contact with my family uh, a lot. I try to make sure that I text them every single week and go on phone calls with my grandma, my grandpa, my dad, and my mom, making sure that everyone's checked in okay. Right. Uh, how, um, how would you suggest to others on a way to zero in on their passion if they feel lost? You just got to be deep and just know, like, if this is really what you want and is it really that important? Because yeah. I know a lot of photographers who are like my buddies who are hustling like me, you know, trying to do this full time. They were just uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> they didn't want to adapt. Um, they just, you know, you rephrase, rephrase the question again. Um, how do you, how would you um, suggest to others, how do we zero in our, on our passion? You know, for someone who's feeling lost yeah. in college and they feel like they could be doing something else, for someone who's working a nine to five, but they really want to escape and do something else, how mm-hmm. do we figure out that passion? Just, it's just natural. It's just natural. It just, it, you should consistently already, you should already know, like, this is what you want. Mm-hmm. And what sucks is that there is people like in college that are in that position where the parents are like, I want you to go to college. I don't care if you want to be a music artist or you want to be a photographer. I want you to go to college. And that sucks. But, Try to work away, depending on your situation, just try to work away around that. Like if I was stuck in college, you know, had to do what I have to do, I'd be sneaking off just like I was in high school, taking photos of, you know, models and friends here and there, just building up a portfolio mm-hmm. and then having a side hustle. And it just all depends on where you're at and what you want to do. Just 
know what you want, just just go get it. Like don't don't listen to your parents, don't listen to anyone. Gary B says it all the time. Be freaking happy. Just don't do whatever people want to tell you. You know. Mm-hmm. How do you uh, how do you stay motivated? Because it sounds like you always got a positive outlook or positive energy on life. Mm-hmm. Just uh, again, like being spiritual, meditate every single day. Knowing, you know, I read books and I read this book, uh, how to keep a just like you said, positive mental attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, just being able to wake up every morning, being grateful for the things you have. The you know, being a you woke up today. That's another thing I'm always thankful for is that God decided you know you're gonna wake up today and, and live another life. So making sure that every day is not wasted, right. uh, making sure that I always have a goal on top of my goals. So once I achieve a goal, there's still, that's nothing. You, you still got to keep going, you know, mm-hmm. like life's a marathon. So I don't know when I'm going to quit and when I'm going to stop doing content creation, but right. I just know that life's a marathon. And once it's my time to not create, then it's my time to not create. So, be it, yeah. so I'm just going to keep, so, so be it. So I'm just going to keep doing what I love every single day until I can. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what it's about. Yeah. I feel like, uh, a lot of people in this day and age, they're scared to, uh, to, you know, go out there and chase their dreams. But I feel like the only thing that really holds people back is either themselves thinking, Hey, you know what? I don't think I can do this. But in reality, people just, I think they just had to take that step out into that deep water and say, you know what? Hey man, if I fail, I fail. And if I succeed, I succeed. And you know what, man? Screw it. I'm just going to go for it anyway. You know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, what is your morning routine you look like? Cause you talked about meditation and a little bit, just walk us mm-hmm. through that. So I go through a thing called the champion challenge, which I wake up at five 30 every single morning, but uh-huh. it's been hard trying to keep it consistent. I try to wake up every single day at that time. I can get that. Uh, but my, I do, I try to get out of bed at uh, six or seven. If I'm still in bed, then I punish myself. Like, dude, dude like what the hell are you doing? Yeah. But, my first thing in the morning is not going on my phone, just taking deep breath, just enjoying the moment. You know, you just woke up. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> go in the bathroom, brush my teeth, do what I need to do. And then I go into my journaling, journaling what I need to do for the day. Mm-hmm. And after that, I just go into my meditations. And then from there, I go to my gym, work out, and then I eat breakfast and then the rest of my day. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, how yeah. would you suggest to people to go about goal setting? What practical advice can you give? Cause it sounds like you got well, it all together, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Just having cause like example, like everyone has a big goal at the end of the day, right. but I feel like people don't look at the bigger picture, like step back and look at the bigger picture. They just look at the goal. So you need to make sure that, um, I, my mentor taught me this too. smart goal. It's acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And it's being specific with your goal, what you want. Um, being able to time it out, having small goals in between, being able to, like example, if your goal is to reach 10K a month, right. you know, have a, have it to where like, okay, I'm making 3K a month this month. I want to try to shoot for 4.5K next month. Mm-hmm. And once you reach that goal, it's like the little tiny goals is what will take you to the bigger goal. It's gaining momentum. But exact momentum, exactly. So just being able to build yourself up in small, tiny steps and able to reach that bigger goal. Got it. Um, how do you suggest to people to go about networking? How can we, how can I, as a person go to reach the level of working with people like Charlie Rocket and, you know, your mentors, what do you suggest? Just I'll reach them. Be the person that you want to be. I already picture yourself. Oh, I've already had, I've already had Grant Cardone on my podcast. I already had Ed Milet on my podcast. I've had all these big people on my podcast. Hey, Charlie, would you like to join my podcast? I just had, you know. Uh, you know, just putting yourself in a position, yeah. <laughs> yeah, putting yourself in a higher position, being confident in yourself and being able to actually go up to the, because these people, these millionaires, these entrepreneurs I talk to, the things they talk about, I'm just like, it's that simple. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really like that. Yeah. Cause they're just like, I want a guy to come up to me and say, Hey, I'll provide you this value. I'll be like, sure, I want to do it. Yeah, go it's for all it. about what value you can provide for that individual at the end of the day. Got it. That's what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead and finish this sentence for me. I'm going to say it. The person I want oh, yeah. to be the most proud of me is. That young, I want that young kid who was in my position a year ago uh-huh. saying, you know, how can I do this full time? How can I not work my nine to five? How can I create full time and do what I love without having this anchor of depression, this anchor of 
and society too. Society is so bad with content creation and stuff. And just a young kid who's looking for help, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day. How do you, um, how do you get yourself right spiritually when you're having a bad day? Like when things are just going wrong, like you just lost, you just lost it. You just lost everything on your recording. Yeah. Everything's not going good. The weather's bad. The shoot didn't oh. go well. How do you center yourself? Oh my God. You know, I just, as soon as something bad happens when it comes to like editing or video production, I just end my day like that. I'm just like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah. Typically I, I can't, pro- I can't work the rest of the day if I feel like that, but it's just being in a meditative state and just telling myself again, you're blessed. You know, there's more days to come. You're young. At the, I forget that I'm 20, yeah. but I tell myself like, you're young, you know, you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. So be it. So just be able to, you know, b- bounce back from it. So once you make mistakes, just, you know, as part of life, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. Just bounce back. Mm-hmm. What do you, uh, what do you suggest to someone who thinks, oh, I have to go to film school before I can uh, go out and make content? Or do you, do you suggest to someone, hey, man, just try it for a couple months while you're in high school. And then if you think you can do it on your own, go for it. What do you suggest, man? What do you think that, what do you think they should I, do if they're in the, if they're in that situation? Yeah. It's just. If they have a scholarship to the film school, freaking take it. If you don't have to spend money, you can take it all day. I, if a film school came to me right now to come do it, I'd probably do it. Yeah. I don't have to pay anything. You know, I'm just I have your learning information. That's probably I'm not gonna be able to learn on YouTube. Uh-huh. But I feel bad because I do know some people who are in film school yeah. and they filmed one video Dang. and they've been in school for a year. Dang. And I'm like, are you serious right now? Like you mean yeah. it's it's just doing the thing. It's just doing your practice like i get it the studying the learning you're in a classroom you're learning whatever you can do that all day too but sure. it's implementing it and doing it mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's being in the field because you know it just depends on you if you're a visual learner if you're someone who likes to learn in a classroom environment or whatever i guess film school's for you yeah but if you're someone who wants to send a message and wants to do this full time and is ready to hit life in the ass <laughs> yeah exactly. and just go full speed ahead then just do what you gotta do. Go film some promo videos. Go tell that that restaurant, hey, I will take photos for you. I will shoot a commercial. Come on, let's do this. And just build your portfolio up. That's it. Right. Um, what do you suggest for people like me who are looking to uh, get their podcast bigger? Should we be focusing on guests? Should we be focusing on content? Where should we be directing our entire energy? Just marketing, man. Just like, like just like what you just said, content. So like having micro pieces of really valuable information that a viewer is going to be able to watch. Like example, your podcast is about, you know, visionaries and content creators. So you're, you're already niched down to content creators. Yep. So just have that content that provides value to content creators. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to talk to big content creators like Matt, Peter McKinnon and, um, you know, Paul Bennett, being able to get them on your podcast, like that's pretty big, you know? And then just like how I said earlier, just position yourself like you're already that big podcast. You're already that podcast that you've already had content creators from mm-hmm. all over the world that's already came and you've found this valuable information. Now you can come onto my page and I'm going to provide that valuable information to you with my content. Exactly. Um, what's the common theme that you see working with all these people that you provide content for? Is there, uh, are they always happy? Do they always have a mindset? Are they always wanting to, willing to give to others? What's the common theme? Oh, it's, all of it. It's the personal development mindset and being able to provide value. Because at the end of the day, when I talk to these clients about content, they're like, okay, I want, I want this video to specifically, specifically example, uh, Carlton Dennis. Yeah. I want this piece of content to be specific, specific specified on a homeowner. Mm-hmm. So we'll make, you know, that content to help out a homeowner. And it's all, they all want to provide value and they all want to build a reputation and be able to pass down what they know to the next generation, which I think is so cool. Cause right. that's, you know, that's what I want to do too. I want to be able to have a whole line of content creators and say, I was able to help them and make Get them cool towards their today. journey. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, finish this sentence for me right here. I want my legacy mm-hmm. to be blank. Definitely. Um, I want to inspire people. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I want to be able to send a message and tell everyone like I was that kid in a small town who didn't have a lot of people believing in him. A lot of people laughed at his face and told him he wasn't going to be able to make it anywhere. Having parents who now support me, which is a dope, yeah. but having parents that didn't support me at the time um, telling me like, is that, are you sure this is what you want to do? Having the friction of people telling you you can't do something 
literally makes you want to do it more. Yeah, and so, so looking back at it, I know there's so many kids who are in worse positions. They're like, I want to buy a camera and do this. And their parents or their society or the people around them say, nah, like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, yeah. get back, get back in the sheep herd, you know? <laughs> exactly, like, man. Get back to work. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's definitely, I want to be able to have kids look up to me and say, I want to be just like Pat Schneider. Got it. <laughs> Dang, man. There you go. We're setting it right yeah. here on the, your passion podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So setting goals, man, where do you see yourself in six months from now? What's the goal, man? You're out in, you're out in San Diego. What's the next, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just my six month goal is to expand the business, having uh, 25 creators work under me right now okay. and being able to provide them with clients and being able to show them the ways of having a personal brand, having a successful um, production business. What's crazy is that you can't really ask, like you can estimate your goal, but mm-hmm. with life, it takes you in so many different directions. So you got to flow like water. I didn't know I was going to be out here in San Diego. This past, like we were planning to be in Arizona for another six months uh-huh. until so some complications happen. And we figured out that we have all like 95% of our clients in California, LA and San Diego. Let's just move back home. And so we moved back home and you know, go. I'm like, Oh my God, what's next for six months? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but overall, just having my business scale and, having uh, jobs created for content creators like me being able to do what they love. Got it. Just taking it day by day and seeing wherever life takes you and being willing to go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so how can anyone like me or just anybody listening to this podcast, how can we start creating content today with what we have? The thing is, is that people, they have it. They just don't start. Mm. It's all about starting. <laughs> like I have content for days on my laptop and I sometimes sit there. I'm like, Oh my God, I don't have any content. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. I'm like, just, you got to start. You just got to start, man. And like, I remember being scared of posting all my work when I first started and I was like, Oh my God, I don't want people to it's getting out of that comfort zone. F what everyone else has to say about you. About you. Uh-huh. Whatever opinion they got, you know, is it going to bother you? Yeah. Is it going to affect your, your work? Is it going to affect what you want? No. So it's just put out as much content as possible and be consistent about the content. See what the content is providing to the viewer. Is it entertaining? Is it valuable? Does mm-hmm. it provide a smile on their face? Yeah. So just understanding who you are as a creative and then just starting, bro. Just get content out there. Yeah. And then how valuable is Instagram marketing in this day and age? And then what, how do you target audiences on there if you have that information? Um, I'm not much of the, 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 when it comes to social media marketing, I'm, mm-hmm. my main job isn't really to look into the marketing. Gotcha, gotcha, of gotcha. That's more of Marco champion. You can yeah. ask for. <laughs> but, um, so when it comes to like, really, I really don't know, man. Gotcha. <laughs> I really, I can't really Hey, thank you for question. the honesty, man. <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah. so how can I deploy a spirit of positivity towards others? Just like I said, being grateful for the things you have and meditate. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds cheesy saying meditate, like literally go out and meditate for a week straight. Dedicate yourself every day to meditate for 10 to 30 minutes of meditation and see how it affects your mindset and affects you as a person. Like Mm -hmm. growing up in Florida, I was a very conservative, hard headed person. Like I didn't really like if you were broke or whatever and you came up to me, I would have been like, dude, go work your ass off. But now I have more empathy. Now I have more. You know, now I can actually relate to humans and now being able to see them with the spirituality that I was able to grow. So it's just being happy with yourself and meditating and just knowing what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any questions for me, Patrick? <laughs> so where do you see yourself in this podcast for the next six months? Uh, in the next six months, I see myself probably having 250 subscribers and probably a thousand listeners on every episode, uh, being able to network and balance school between, and Mm -hmm. you know, being able to network and balance school with other people like you, uh, you know, bigger people like Charlie rocket and even your mentors as well. And just targeting those people on the podcast and learning how I can add value towards them and then phrase it in that way. When I do hit them up in that DM as well as working on, um, my marketing, you know, learning how to target audiences. Mm-hmm. I'll probably be checking out your mentor's content and really just consuming that. Yeah. And then just being really humble about where I'm at. And then, um, mm-hmm. you know, just 
learning from people like you and then looking back on episodes and say, man, you know what? I did that. And how can I go deeper on the questions? How can I pull out more stuff that's going to be more valuable to people? Like you say, like content is only valuable when you provide value to others, not just make it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Anything else you got for me, Pat? Awesome. How, how old are you? How old do you think I am? <laughs> no, I'm 20. <laughs> Your age. Oh, you're 20? Oh, okay. Yeah, there man. You go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you look, you look, you look a lot older. For yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get that a little bit, for sure. Hey, we're young, bro. We're, look at you. You're on a podcast right now. You're starting your own podcast. I'm doing what I'm doing. We're young. There are a lot of kids like us that are still partying, being drunk in college right now or doing dumb stuff. Dude, for sure. Like, like for it me, it feels weird to even talk about that we're 20 right now. It feels yeah, weird. like for me, like uh, <laughs> right now, I do still have a normal nine to five, but because of the whole COVID situation, I've been able to take yep. the time to reflect on what I really wanted to do. And, um, you know, man, yeah. I used to go to work and I'd be like, man, I really don't want to be doing this. I know I could be doing something else. Just like you said on how yeah. your story and how mm-hmm. you would just say, man, screw school, bro. I'm going to take these pictures. I'm going to make these. I'm gonna, I got my freaking mentor over here. I'm going to be learning. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to provide you know, empathy and everything I can and then just put my energy towards that. So really, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just in that field or in that mindset right now and then really just trying to bet on myself. You know, I think, you know, yep. people say you can invest money into a portfolio and to this and that or to homes and whatever, but I think the best place to invest your money is into yourself, you know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, you know, like in college and in high school, man, like people used to go to parties and stuff and I used to be like, man, what are you guys celebrating? Like, y'all haven't made any money yet. You don't own a business. You, exactly. did, you guys you guys just go to school and you're chilling and you don't go and you don't do anything. And I'm like, bro, what are you grinding yeah, for? People like that scare me, bro. Like yeah, because I'm all like, like, be, yeah. Because like, I'm like, bro, you're going to finish school and you're not even going to know what you want to do. And like, I'll go to my school. I go to, I go to LMU in LA, the little Marymount University. And oh, yeah. they'll be like, oh yeah, we provide connections and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Dude, I've been able to make better connections just straight up hitting people on online, dude. And then just right here, that's how it happened. I just hit Pat up. It was the right moment, right time. I saw he was coming out to San Diego, and we made it happen, man. Yeah. 100%, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't make it out either. No, it's all good. I honestly really didn't think this COVID stuff would have been that crazy out here. Because Phoenix was getting pretty bad Mm -hmm. with all the cases. And then when we moved out here, and everyone was like, it might be quarantine again. I'm like, what the hell? Exactly. It's crazy. And then it's back to normal, like we're normal quarantine, whatever. But dude, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. I respect that hustle, dude. That you're mm-hmm. twenty years old, saying like, "What are you celebrating for?" All my friends back home in Florida. Florida is a party state. A hundred percent. These parties, yes. they they party on a Wednesday, bro. So they <laughs> <laughs> they're insane. But yeah, again, like I don't know how they can just sit there and be okay with just being in the position that they're at. Uh, so do you think that's awesome to connect with people like you, bro? Yeah. Do you think um you think someone like me and you can change someone's mindset and, and sit down with them like that? Or do you think they have to come to their own realization and say like, Hey, you know what? I just had to get control of my life. What do you think? Yeah. They need, they need to figure out some things on their own, man. Cause I try to, I, I have a close friend of homies, five of them that I grew up with in high school and they're, uh-huh. they're not doing the best, you know? And I've tried over the years, like, Hey bro, like just put yourself in this mindset, like meditate, do this, do that. They're not down for it's, it. Huh? Until they, until they realize how they are and they are aware of the choices that they make Mm -hmm. then they'll be like okay i gotta make a change i gotta be able to do this now and then from there then we can help them provide because all we can do is show them the door that's true they gotta be the ones to walk through it that's true man (laughs) 100 Mm -hmm. any other questions man anything you got for me hope to see this uh content bro (laughs) yes sir yes sir all right Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to another episode of the Your Passion Podcast with Patrick Snyder. Peace. Thank you.